Hi everyone, I have entitled this lecture Fiction Terms to start with. It is worth noting that there are numerous literary elements or devices that may be found in any given piece of poetry, drama, or fiction. Here I have gathered for you the most frequently used terms. Illusion is a reference of work, is a reference in a work of literature to a fictional mythological or historical event, person, or work outside the story. Illusion suggests similarities to comparable situations in another time or place. For example, I was surprised his nose was not growing like Pinocchio's. This refers to the story of Pinocchio, the emblematic wooden character as portrayed by Italian writer Carlo Lorenzini. Setting is a time and place in which a story takes place. It includes four major elements. Place, this is the geographical location where the story takes place. Time is the historical period when the story takes place. Weather conditions, is it rainy, sunny, stormy, etc. Social conditions, what is the daily life of the characters? Does the story contain local color? A local color is a form of writing that focuses on the characters, dialect, customs, topography, and other features particular to a specific region. Irony, irony is, a, is an incongruity between expectation and reality. There are three basic forms of irony. Verbal irony, this is the contrast between what is said and what is really meant. Example, to congratulate someone who came late. Situational irony, and this refers to a discrepancy between what is intended and what actually happens. Example, you make a terrible mistake at work and expect your boss to fire you, but you get surprisingly promoted. Traumatic irony, this occurs when the audience or reader knows more about a situation in the story than the characters. Tone is the author's stance toward his or her subject and audience. An author's tone can be revealed through the setting, choice of words or diction, and other supplementary details. It may be light-hearted or deadly serious, ideologically driven or neutral. Symbolism is a person, place, or object which has a meaning in itself, but suggests other meanings as well. Some symbols are conventional, generally meaning the same thing to all readers. Example, a dough is a symbol of peace, and a rose a symbol of passion. Theme. Theme is the main idea or underlying meaning of a literary work. A theme may be stated or implied, major or minor. It is more specific than the subject of the story. The subject of a story might be war, why the theme might be the idea that war is pointless. Um, theme is different from um, motive, in the sense that theme should be stated in a sentence, for example, appearances uh, can be misleading. Why a motive is stated in just one word, for example, the recurring uh, motive of the piano or the window. Plot is the sequence of related events in a given story. All fiction is based on conflict, and this conflict is presented in a structured format called plot. There are different elements to a classical plot. They include exposition. It is the introductory material which creates the tone, presents the characters, and other facts that help to understand the story. The writer sets the scene by providing description and background. Inciting force or incident refers to the event or character that triggers the conflict. The conflict is the basis of fiction, and most significantly, of theatre. As Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw once said, 
no conflict, no drama. Conflicts create plots, and the conflicts we encounter can usually be identified as one of four kinds. Man versus man. Uh, it is a conflict that pits one person against another. Man versus nature. It is a run-in with the forces of nature. Man versus society. This happens with values and classes by which people live are being challenged. Man versus self. It, it is an internal dilemma. The existence of conflicts enhances the reader's understanding of a character and creates suspense. Rising action. Rising action is a series of events that build up the conflict. It begins with the inciting force of complication and ends with the climax. The story builds and gets more exciting. Crisis is the moment when the conflict reaches a turning point. At this stage, the opposing forces in the story meet and the conflict becomes more, most intense. The conflict occurs before or concomitantly with the climax. The climax is the result of the crisis. It is the point of highest tension and greatest emotion in the story. Fall in action is the series of events after the climax which lead to the denouement, thereby closing the story. Resolution, it is the end of the central conflict. It, it concludes the action in traditional plots. Plot structure is represented through um, a diagram called Freytag's Pyramid. This Freytag's Pyramid or diagram or plot diagram was devised by 19th century German playwright Gustav Freytag. It is a paradigm of dramatic and uh, narrative structure outlining the key steps in traditional storytelling. It takes the form of a um, life cycle. Characterization, we have the protagonist, is the main character in the story. The antagonist is the character or force that opposes the protagonist. Then we have the foil character, and this is a character that provides a contrast to the protagonist. We have a round character, is a complex or three-dimensional character, fully developed with traits that are both good and bad. A flat character is a two-dimensional character that lacks depth. We have dynamic, a dynamic character, is a developing character that changes or grows to a new awareness of life. Static character is a character who can be either a round or flat, but who does not change throughout the story. Point of view. Perspective from which the story is told. We have the first person narrator. Um, he uses the pronoun I. And the narrator uh, here is a character in the story who presents the action through the eyes of only one character. Um, this seldom, the first person na narrator um, seldom occurs in literary works and it is most frequently associated with autobiographic works. Second, we have third person narr narrator. Uh, he uses pronouns he, she, or they. The omniscient narrator is an all knowing outsider who can enter the minds and sensations of more than one of the characters. We have the limited omniscient, he is uh, a narrator um, who is usually an outsider uh, that sees into the mind of one of the characters. Objective, third person narrator, um, he does not see into the mind of any character, he can only tell us what is happening. Uh, we have foreshadowing as a technique, and this is the author's use of hints or clues to suggest what will happen later in the story. Forthcoming events are merely hinted at through dialogue, description, or the attitudes and reactions of the characters, 
foreshadowing builds suspense. Now I will focus um, more specifically on uh, a character's personality and how you can understand it. Um, so the first question to ask yourself after reading a literary work is, what is your gut reaction? What is your visceral impression of the character? A character's name can be highly symbolic. It may hold dramatic irony within itself. For instance, in Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter, the heroine, Mr. Freem, has a daughter named Fur. And in the fictional context of the Puritan novel, the name Fur ironically signifies how the ostracized woman treasures the fruit of her adulterous ex. Concerning um, the physical description, how does the writer establish his character through age, body, language, facial expressions, and use of ornaments or props? What clothes is the character wearing? How does he see himself by his appearances? How does he interact with other characters through eye contact and body positioning? Bear in mind that based on the principle of decorum, characters should dress and behave in a manner suitable to their rank, sex, age, personality, etc. Um, basic psychological traits. What is the character's emotional state? What causes this responsive situation? And requires a love, sense of guilt, remorse, anger, love, jealousy, envy, boredom, shame, injustice, repressed drives, etc. Does the character have a poor or strong impulse control? How does the character cope with frustration and aggression? To which extent can he restrain his urge, his urges, um, which can be vengeful, lustful, sadistic, masochistic, murderous, etc. Does he seem to be ruled by passion or reason or some combination thereof? Is the character coherent or dislocated? Is there any discrepancy between what he says and what he does? Remember Hamlet's instruction in Shakespeare's theater. So the action to the word, the word to the action. It is likewise important to answer this question. Is there any incongruity between what he or she says or does and what other people say about him or her? What does the character need to change in his personality to become a fully-fledged self? Is he dependent on how other characters perceive him? Is he judgmental of others? What motivates him? What frightens him? What, take, what makes him feel safer? Contrary to Descartes' belief that human behavior is conscious, characters are not always mindful of their behavioral motives. Due to the flaws, biases, blind spots, limited self-awareness, etc., that blur their vision, the character's unconscious desires often deviate from his conscious needs. These inadequacies cre create a marked discrepancy between expectations and reality, ideals and actualities. The offset between personal values and public codes intensifies both the character's inner and outer tensions. How characters perceive themselves and how others view them is seldom harmonious and often results in major conflicts. How does the character reach the dreams he pursues? Is he decisive or irresolute? Different characters faced with the same situation we respond differently, usually due to psychological traits. What does the character do to get what he's longing for? Does he use intelligence, charm, manipulation, intimidation, and conceivably violence to control others and to satisfy his own selfish needs? Does he fight, flee, 
lie, whine, etc. Social status. Consider the following when trying to understand a character. Age, sex, gender, race, religion, social class, profession, financial stability, family structure, human relationships, physical and emotional health, etc. What does society expect from the character? Sometimes the character tends to believe or behave in certain ways, but society interferes with his desires, thoughts, and actions. It imposes restrictions on his free deliberation, and this may well lead to big gaps between reality and fantasy. How does the character speak? What are his educational background and intellectual level? What are his social or life skills? Is his language prosaic, poetic, witty, caustic, graceful, or hurtful? How is the character involved in the story? What is the character's significance in the story? Is he visible and audible? Describe the opening scene where he first appears. Does he have the final say in the literary work? Why is that? Describe the character's point of view about life and his relationship with his um, society as represented by other characters. Bear in mind that a main character's point of view is prone to change. If the current character's point of view does not change, why not? And how does a static attitude affect him? Internal conflicts focus on the basic tensions within a person. This may be a moral dilemma between good and evil, exclusion and acceptance, emotional and rational decision. External conflicts, on the other hand, focus on the struggle between the character and some other force, such as nature, faith, or society. Mental patterns of coping, fortifying mechanisms, are similarly paramount to understand characters and works of art. How does the character deal with anger, sadness, lack, loss, grief, etc.? When a character is faced with threat and adversity, his mask drops and he gets partially or thoroughly revealed. What are the instances when a character is in danger? Um, how does he react to various threats? Is he vulnerable or strong will? Does he act fiercely or tenderly? Does he have a mental breakdown or withdrawal? What are the major actions taken by the character? Does he reply suitably? Does he act more than he reacts? Does he invent pretext to delay his feedback? Or does he retaliate promptly? List significant quotes by and about a given character. Provide textual evidence to back up your lines of arguments or counter arguments. Do you know anyone analogous or antithetic to him in another short story, novel, play, or poem? Compare and contrast the different characters in different literary works. Cross referencing is highly relevant to your academic analysis. Do you guys relate to the characters? Why or why not? Identification and distance are tremendously useful for assessing literature and arts. Accordingly, a forthcoming lecture will be wholly dedicated to reception theories in literature and arts. Thank you so much for your listening. Bless you.